A day without storytelling is, for me, a disconnected day. The children at least have their play, but I cannot remember what is real to the children without their stories to anchor fantasy and purpose. Who are these people who dare to reinvent mythology? They are the children found in every classroom, thinking up plot and dialogue without instruction, and for most part, without the teacher's awareness. Amazingly, children are born knowing how to put every thought and feeling into story form. If they're worried about being lost, they become the parent who searches. If they are angry, they find hot hippopotamuses to impose his will upon the world. It's play, of course, but it's also story and action, just as storytelling is play put into narrative form. do is I go around to lots and lots and lots of schools and children tell me their stories and I write their stories down and then we all get to act them out. But what I have to do before we actually do that is I need to make a stage. And this is our stage. It looks like a square. It does look like a square doesn't it? But it's actually a rectangle. It is actually a rectangle that looks like a square, you're right. Shall I tell you this one? This was told to me by somebody who was five. I'm five. You're five. I'm five. Wow. I'm nearly five. Right, nearly five. So this was told by somebody who was five. There were five spiders. One two, three, four, five. Could you come onto the stage? And could I see you pretending? Could you stand up and show me how you move around as spiders? Show me how spiders would move and I see you moving around on your stage. They were in their web and they were climbing up the web. Can I see you climbing up your web? Moving around the stage, climbing up your web. Suddenly, it went dark. And there was lightning. Zaria and Fog, can I get you to come up? Can you be the lightning for me? And how would you pretend to be lightning? Oh, that's a great sound, Sterling. Should we make the sound of the lightning and the thunder like Sterling was doing? Can I hear the sound we all do? Excellent. And are they moving? How would the lightning move? Oh, that's nice. That's some nice moves. Fantastic. Look, they're doing some great moves, zigzaggy moves. And they were swirling around. Can I see the lightning swirling around? Fantastic, look at the lightning. And the spiders were scared. Can I see these spiders being really scared? Look how frightened the spiders are. And they climbed back up into their house. Can I see you climbing back up your web? It's climbing back up. And the lightning became a monster, stamping his feet. Can I see you being the monster? And let's see you stamping your feet, stamping your feet and making a noise. Let's make the noise of the monster. Fantastic. And that is the end of the story. Let's clap back to you. What happens when somebody's told a story and we act it out? But I wonder, I wonder if anyone here has got a story they'd like to tell me. <coughs> Manal, what I'm going to do is I've written your name here and your story can be as short as you like, but it can't be any longer than the bottom of the page. Okay? <coughs> All right, so do you want to tell me your story? Yeah. Okay, let me write that down. Once upon a time, there was a friendly tiger. And then there was a friendly lion. No, no, let me get out your story. Do you want to be the friendly tiger or the friendly lion, or do you want to be the wind? 
You want to be the friendly tiger. Okay, I'm going to put a circle around the friendly tiger. Two lions. Oh, is there two lions? Yeah. Is there one tiger but two lions, yeah? No, two tigers and two lions. Oh, you want two tigers and two lions. There were, there was two friendly tigers. <laughs> so do you want to come up now and show me how your tiger moves? And Evie, can you come and show me how your tiger moves? And there was two friendly lions. One, two. Can you come be the friendly lions? And they were playing together. Can I see them playing together? And then, began yesterday, they were not friends together. Can I see you not being friends together? Oh, look at this. They're really not friends. Fantastic. Then the wind blew them off. One. Two, three. Can you come and be the wind, Thomas? Can you come be the wind here? Can you take them down? And can you show me how the wind blows? Can I see them blowing? And let's see them being blown around. Let's see them being blown. Fantastic. And then they come friends again. Can I see you becoming friends again? Fantastic. And there they are, the lion and the tiger. Let's clap. Thank you. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a list of anyone who wants to tell me a private story. One day there was one girl. One day there was one girl. There was once upon a time there was Barry the fish fish fingers. Yeah? Okay, let me write that down. Once upon a time there was Barry the fish fish fingers. Petal is going to be the girl in her story. One day there was one girl. Up you get Petal and show us how this one girl walks. One day there was one girl. She was in her castle. Thomas, Raffi, Manal, could you stand up and make a castle? Oh, look at the castle, fantastic. She went outside, can I see the girl going outside, Heppel? And she made some sandcastles. Can I see you pretending to make sandcastles? Could you pretend, Vaughan, that you're Kate making a flower? Let's see how you make flowers. You flower. And you're the flower, aren't you? Can I see the flower growing and being made? Let's see the flower grow. Being made fantastic. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a walking shoe. Do you want to come up and be the walking shoe for me? Yeah, should I get the two of you to come up and be the walking shoe? Up you come. Can you show how you'd be the, oh, I like this walking shoe. <laughs> and the shoe decided to go for a swim. Can I see you pretending to go for a swim? <laughs>
starting off introducing, then getting some names for private storytelling, collecting private stories, bringing the private stories back and acting them out. Private stories always have to be acted out on the day they're taken. Because otherwise you'll spend the week collecting stories, they might not get acted out. The fact that they're acted out is why children engage with it and why it's so important for them. There's a story in Mrs Tully's classroom that Vivian tells. And the story is of a two-year-old and her story is <coughs> Mama. And so the two-year-old tells her story and it's written down and then they all come together to act out the stories that have been collected from the two-year-olds. And Vivian reads the word, Mama. And the two-year-old gets up on the stage and maybe just <coughs> swirls around. And that's the two-year-old playing Mama. And then all the other twos are, oh, wow, wow. And they all want to have a turn getting up and playing their role of what Mama is. So they get up one at a time and each of them, and maybe one of them, this is their Mama. Maybe another one might do some cooking. Maybe another one does some cartwheels. But all of the twos have their own version of what that word mama means to them. I was writing, working with a boy um, in a town hamlet school who spoke very little English, but his story was... <laughs> So I just wrote that down. It was hard to spell. Do you use story as a way to try out different roles or try out different experiences? I mean, how often do you see the child going, you be the baby and I'll be the mum, and the mum's cross. <laughs> and it's going, okay, what does it feel like? I don't know, mum's cross, I want to feel what that's like. It gives us a chance to feel a different perspective. What's it like being cross? Can I see you playing with the ball? <coughs> and she looked at me. And I was being a good workshop leader, so I sat on my hands. Mm. And I looked at her. I said, oh, come on, play your ball. I was being really good, so I didn't push. And then I started to actually <coughs> really look at her. And then I looked at her hands. And I realised that her fingers were just starting to move the tiniest of amounts. So I said to her, is that your ball in your hand? She nodded. And then I got all the children around the stage to play with the ball in exactly the same way as her. And as they were doing it, just see the hand moving just that slight bit more as she felt more confident in this being okay. And afterwards, as I thought about that, the journey from here to here, that's huge. That is a massive journey. And actually, why is that any better than this? I think too many of us find getting up and doing stuff so difficult, because when we were kids, we were forced. Let's make our children feel safe. And actually, it's safe, they're safe to go, no, I don't want to. And they're safe to go, when they're up there, I will take them through every stage so they don't feel uncomfortable. Once upon a time, a bird was flying round its nest. And then it saw a tree, what looked all shiny. And the bird called his mum, and he told his mum he saw a shiny tree. And his mum told him, there's no such thing as a shiny tree. And the bird said, yes there is. And his mum came to look. And his mum saw the shiny tree. And she told him, let's pick all the shiny leaves off. So they did. And after the, the five-year-old, she told me the story, I really thought about it. And I was thinking, what is it? What is this shiny tree that the mum picks the leaves off? And the more I thought about it, the more I wondered, if how many times do children try to show us their shiny trees, the beautiful things that they've created? Come and have a look at my picture. Come and see what I've done. Come and look at the thing that I've built on the floor. And we go and, oh, no, in a minute. I'll go in a minute. Isn't it? Oh, I can't be bothered now. I'm doing something. No, no, please. Come and have a look. See what I've done. Come and have a look at my painting. Come over here. 
And then how many times as we go and look at their shiny tree that they've created, do we stand there and go, oh, it'd be really good if you could just put some grass here, or maybe if you did the sun in yellow, and how about if you drew a little bird in the corner there and we start to pick away at their shiny trees. And so I think for me, and the most important thing about this approach and the way that for me is exciting about it, is it's our chance to plant those shiny trees and let our children grow and develop them, or for them to plant their shiny trees to grow and develop them. And we won't pick their leaves up.